Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the second part, second component of dashboards. In this session, uh, we will see how the use of units and uh, the sharing function is working in the dashboards. So uh, I have logged into the system and uh, I'm on this JV national dashboard. So I will uh, change to the malaria burden dashboard here which is available for me. So if you go through this dashboard, I hope I'm uh, audible. Can you hear me and see the screen? Yes. Right, thank you. Uh, so if you go to the first chart, you can see the data is for training land. So there is uh, there are three data items, three lines, and the data is for training land as 12 months. So how is this training land defined? So we will see. So I'm going to open this chart in the data visualizer app. So if I open this chart, in the data visualizer app, I can see the dimension selected for this favorite. So if you see data, you can see three, three data items here. If you see period, you can see it's last 12 months. If you go to org unit, you can see it's the user organization unit. That is the organization, the organization unit where the user is allocated, attached to. So this user I'm logged in is attached to the training land. So that's why I'm seeing data for the training land here. So I will change this from user or unit ID selected. And if I put user subunit, so that is that data should change to one level below the user. If I click update, so I can see the data has changed to the region level, the animal region and food region. So if I click one below level, so I will see data for this district level. So if a user is attached to district level and the chart is changed accordingly, he or she will change data either to the user org unit or user sub org unit. So I will change this for the user subunit and update, and I will save this visualization for the moment. And if I update this dashboard, you will see that data is for animal region and food region, but still it will be the same total because both are, will be accumulated. But you can see the label has changed that the chart level has changed now. So I'm going to change it back to user org unit and update. And remember, changes will occur when you have saved or replaced the favorite. And I will go back and update my chart and it will change back to training land level. So by this, you can restrict data to that user and the level of data which we are showing to that user. So that is an easy method and a useful method when you are restricting data to a certain user. I will also try changing the periods here. Currently it's last 12 months but I will change it to last six months and update. So the data will change here because I have changed it to last six months. You can see only six months now. And I will save it. I'm going to update it. So you can see only data for the last six months here. I'm going back change in the period to last 12 months as it was before and update.
and I'm going to save it. So that is how the relative periods and the user org units work in the dashboard. Now let's discuss, we have discussed about the user org units. Let's discuss about the sharing options in the dashboard. So this button, which we showed in the beginning, the share button is used to restrict who can see, who can see and who can edit the dashboard. So if I click the share button within this malaria burden reduction, you can see which users have the access to this dashboard. So sharing settings, malaria burden reduction, it is created by Olapo. And uh, who has access there? Public access is there. So everyone who logs into this system will have access to this system, can, can view this dashboard. They cannot edit it, but they can view it. If you want it to not to be public, you can click no access so that only people who share you with people who we are sharing the dashboard will have access. So if I click no access, then uh, only people who have access, uh, who, are, who you are sharing the dashboard will have it. Otherwise you can have anyone to edit also if you click this option. And the external access is disabled here. So if you click it, you can enable external access so that anyone with the link outside the system can see. So we can share the URLs in other systems also. Apart from that, this is also shared with this malaria admin group. So that malaria admin group can also edit it. Not only viewing it, they can edit it also. So that access is given to malaria admin group. So apart from that, you can add any other users whom you're allowing to edit this dashboard. Here just you have to type the name of the user or type a group of users. So it's easy when you have made user groups so that you can share the items easily with that same group. So I will add, uh, let's say district. So there is a group called district managers. I'm going to add them. Someone deleted their dashboard. So I'm going to share this uh, immunization dashboard now. I'm going to click share. I'll say district. Here are the district managers. I'm going to add them. So you can see that user group is added here. So you can either can enable them to edit and view or view only. So anybody in the user group called district managers can edit and view this now. So that is how you share dashboards. And uh, by combining these two methods, the user org unit and the sharing, you can enable, you can reuse your dashboards. Let's go back to my presentation. So sharing dashboards, you, dashboards could be saved as private or public to anyone, depending on authorities and for other users to view them or edit them. And uh, you can grant users to view or edit, including deleting. So if you give uh, permission to edit, they will delete it also. That's what happened I think now. Somebody has deleted that malaria dashboard. So by combining this sharing method, 
and the user organic method, you can reuse one dashboard item to fit the purpose of many users. So you don't have to make dashboards for each user. You can reuse them by sharing and you don't have to make dashboards for each organization unit so that the person who is logged in will see your only da data for that person's org unit. So that is something which you have to remember. And uh, I will further demonstrate how this users of the other districts can see this dashboard. Let's uh, log in using a district user. So let's say this cat district manager. I'm going to sign in using this cat district manager. So that person, because data is defined as user org units, that person will see data for cat district. So here you can see the org units for that cat district. So I will change to another org unit, another user. So the staple district. that person logs into the same system we'll see the same dashboard but for different org units assigned to him so that's about the basics and the functions of the dashboards in DHIS2. I hope you are now familiar with the layout and how to create dashboards, how to add items to the dashboards, and how to share these dashboards and reuse them in your instance. So uh, we will do the exercise three now, which is about uh, this sharing dashboards. And uh, we will have a 30 minute break from now so you can uh, finish the exercise and uh, have some refreshments. And in 30 minutes, we will start the session again and we will start about the reports app after that. So if there are any questions, please post them in the Slack or in the chat. We will answer the questions and uh, please be back in 30 minutes and please make sure you practice all exercises one, two and three for the dashboard. And uh, also there is a graded assignment for the dashboard, which we will show at the end. Thank you.